What's up, my friends? Welcome back to another video. And today we are taking a look at the three step Asanato formula. Super excited about this one because I think um, Asanati or Asanatos have a lot of confusion surrounding them, especially in uh, more quick action style music. Um, a lot of people wonder how to write them and uh, it, it kind of seems like a mystery for some people. So hopefully this will kind of help demystify the process. I'll share with you three very practical steps you can take. Uh, we'll kind of discover what an ostinato is and then how you can actually go step by step uh, for writing it for yourself. Uh, before we actually really dive in though, I want to give you a totally free guide called Five Orchestration Mistakes to Avoid. Um, I put this guide together specifically because when it comes to orchestrations and mock-ups, there are so many things to consider in addition to simply deciding which instrument goes where and so on and so forth. Um, so when it comes to virtual orchestrations in particular, right, there's so many things to look out for, like doublings or uh, voicings, deciding which instruments go where, but also how to balance them and all of that stuff. And if we miss any one of these steps, it can create uh, a mock-up that just doesn't sound very cohesive or very realistic. So this guide is specifically meant to dispel any of those mistakes and address them head on so you can uh, look out for them the next time you're working on your mock-up and you know exactly what to avoid. So I want to give that to you absolutely free. If you want to click the first link in the description box below, it'll take you straight there and you can download it as my free gift to you for checking out this video. Okay, so without further any 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 further ado, let's kind of dive into the um, ostinato. So first of all, an ostinato is a repeating motive or melodic fragment that carries on until it's essentially served its purpose. Um, usually you would see this in type of uh, like faster type of music, like adventure music or trailer music, but it keeps the momentum going and it maintains a certain energy and a certain flow that you don't get without the ostinato. So let me quickly show you an example here. This is an adventure theme, uh, Super Mario Galaxy type of theme that uh, I collaborated with uh, on uh, I collaborated on with Ryan Leach, a uh, fellow YouTuber and composer. And uh, I just want to show you this middle section that does feature a string ostinato. So we'll just have a listen to it and then we'll discuss it and break down the process a little bit. So here we go. Okay, so let's have a listen. Uh, have a listen to that one more time. I'm actually going to remove the ostinato. So let's see if we can hear a difference here. <clears throat> Good. Okay, let's stop and have a listen one more time. Let's put the ostinato back in. So a very subtle difference, but you do hear that kind of chugging along in the background, and that's what maintains the momentum and the energy for this entire passage. So let's talk about how to actually create an ostinato from scratch. Uh, the first step to really consider is the actual rhythm you want to go for. So the rhythm, the uh, you know how fast do you want it to go? Um, do you want a specific pattern, or do you want more straight notes? You know that type of thing. And this kind of comes down to the time signature, the BPM of your piece. In this case, it's a pretty quick tempo, right? 141 or 140. So that's like da, 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 da. That's pretty fast. So if we slow this down a little bit, there's a variety of ways. There's really so many ways you could come up with a rhythmic pattern. It could be as simple as one e and a two e and a da, 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 da. You could do da, 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 right? You could go. That's another pattern. You could go right. So it really is completely up to you how you want to structure the rhythm of this ostinato. But once you decide on that one cell, so like maybe the first four or five notes, whatever that fragment uh, is, you want to repeat that over and over because that will establish that certain rhythm that will be created over and over and set that foundation for the rest of the instruments that will go on top. Because if you think about it, an ostinato is not the main element. It's actually one of those supporting elements uh, that increases the texture and makes the entire thing feel uh, more flowing and increases the movement, right? So in this case, 
we decided to just go with a very strict 16th note pattern. 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a. And the simplicity in this rhythm essentially allows the pattern to go by relatively unnoticed, but it still increases the energy of the overall arrangement. Let's actually solo up the, the asanata so you can hear what, what it sounds like. Right, so like super, super simple, right? Actually, I have an extra note here I don't need. Um, but yeah, that, that's essentially it. And so this, this simple 16th note pattern, the straight 16s, just, again, es establishes that foundation, that rhythmic foundation for the background. And then it allows the, you know, the trombone and the horn melody to sit on top, any percussion to happen underneath. But um, that's that's very important is establishing that rhythmic foundation. And again, you can have a variety of choices, whatever feels right for the piece, but just make sure you, you establish that rhythm first. So that's step number one. Now, step number two actually contains like three components in one. So we want to think about the key. We also want to think about the direction. And we also want to think about the range. So three things, key, direction, and range. So by key, we're talking about the tonality, right? What's the key of the overall piece? And what's actually the chord that's playing at the moment, more specifically. So in this case, uh, this section is in the key of A flat major, and this section actually starts off with an A flat major chord. So most likely we're gonna be using notes from the A flat major scale, which should make sense. And that allows the notes to remain cohesive and feel like it's fitting with the rest of the arrangement, right? So that's the key. Number two is thinking about the direction. Do we want the ostinato to be going up? Do we want it to be going down or do we want a blend of both? So it could be going up and down like it could go it could go um like it could start higher and dip down and go back up or it could just go all the way down. In this case, we chose a broken chord style. And you can see all of them are going down. So every time the ostinato repeats, it's essentially starting from that same note and traveling its way back down every time. So we get that one, two, three, four, we get that kind of rhythmic marching feeling because that ostinato is starting from that same spot every single time. So it feels like it's it's marked in a certain way, right? So direction is number two. So key is A flat major, direction we want it to go down in this case. And then also um, the third thing was the range, right? So how far apart do we want the highest notes and the lowest notes of the ostinato to be? Usually you probably don't want it to be too wide because an ostinato usually feels like it's it's one unit that's kind of close together so in my opinion usually within an, an octave is generally the best way to go but you can go as um like the intervals can be as small as like a second uh like maybe within the ostinato could be within like a fourth or a fifth um or up to an octave usually so in this case we decided to go um within an octave so in this it sounds like this so if actually maybe i have to click Ah, uh, there we go. I have to unsolo that. So it sounds like this. I'm playing it really, really slowly, but you get a sense of like the highest note is this A flat and the lowest note is the A flat below it, right? So it's within an octave, but you could also go like this. And there we're just going down by step every single time, um, diatonic to the scale of A flat. So deciding on how large how large you want the range ranges to be, that will determine kind of the notes that you pick as well. So yeah, um, I will typically go within a fourth or a fifth or up to an octave. Usually that's the key there. So again, determine the key, determine the direction, and determine the range, the 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 distances between the lowest notes and the highest notes. Super important. And then step number three, finally, is determining the notes themselves. And this more comes down to, um, do you want the notes to be following like a broken chord structure? Like, so do you want the notes to essentially match the chord that's playing at the moment? Or do you want them to be more of like a scale? And maybe you have an occasional skip in there. So you could go, again, you can step down. In this case, I'm going A flat, G, F, E flat, A flat, G, F, E flat. That's just outlining the, the top few notes of that A flat major scale. Or you can go down the entire, like the entire A flat major broken chord and go down, right? So that creates a sense of uh, cohesion because that, the ostinato is literally replicating the notes of the chord that's being played at the moment. And then the next bar, it's a C minor chord. So naturally, 
sorry, C major chord. So we have G, E, C, G. Those are all notes of the C major chord. It's outlining the C major triad, right? So it's very consonant. It feels very good. Um, and there's no dissonance there. If you do have scale notes though, then you risk using some non, or sorry, you, you risk using some notes that clash with the chord that's currently playing. But the notes are typically played so fast that the listener doesn't really register the ostinato being dissonant compared to the chord that's being played at the moment. So that's why speed kind of matters, determining your BPM and the rhythm, right? But yeah, in, in general here, we're just going uh, with a broken chord motion all the way down and then repeating that same chord over and over until the chord changes. Um, I could have done maybe, you know, I could have went uh, A flat. I could have jumped down to the E flat and then just went back up by step to the A flat again. So I could have went and then maybe for the C major chord. So that's like G, E, D, C. Um, that there's a D in there, which doesn't belong to the C major chord, but because it passes so quickly, people don't even notice it, right? So those are kind of how the three steps work together. Again, I we just had to make sure that the ostinato was consistent rhythmically. So going with a 16th note pattern, we establish that first. Then we go with what key is it in? So it's an A flat major and each chord is basically changing. So the ostinato will probably have to accommodate that chord change, right? In some way. Uh, also, the direction, we decided we wanted to go down each time, but it could have easily went up as well. The, the benefit of starting higher and going down is that you get more of an attack on the first note because the human ear tends to hear higher notes a bit easier compared to lower notes. So when you hear those higher notes uh, played with a little more attack, then it feels like there's an accent on every single beat that's happening. So it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it makes the asano feel more powerful than it actually is, you know? And then uh, the range, right? I didn't want to, we, we didn't really need it to go down higher than, more than an octave. So we just kept the limits within an octave there. And then we decided finally which notes to actually write down. So in this case, we just went with a broken chord to outline those chords instead of um, going with a scalar motion, which might have introduced a little bit of dissonance. But again, because it's moving so fast, the listener barely notices. So yeah, that's essentially it. That, that's the three step formula is following those steps of rhythmic uh, establishment, like making sure you get the right rhythm you want, making sure you think about the key, the uh, the range and the direction, and then finally the actual notes themselves. Do you want broken chords? Do you want more of a scalar motion or anything in between? It's totally up to you, but make sure you stick with that, that core um, skeleton, that's core framework, and you'll essentially be good to go there. Let me know if that helps. Um, this is more of an adventure, an exciting Mario Galaxy type of context. So of course it's, it's a bit more isolated, but um, this type of formula should work for a variety of cases, um, no matter what style you're writing in. And notice that we're using strings here. Um, strings tend to be very flexible and they can play very fast passages, whereas you know brass instruments tend to be slightly less flexible in that regard. Woodwinds are also very flexible. They can do ostinati very well too, but woodwinds also need to breathe. So that's why strings are usually a great choice for ostinatos in my opinion. But yeah, let me know if this is helpful in any way. Um, looking forward to hearing your, your kind of takeaways from this uh, and whether this framework kind of makes sense for you. I'd love to know. And if you're working on your own orchestrations and your own MIDI mockups, then definitely check out the free guide in the description box below, Five Orchestration Mistakes to Avoid. I want to give these to you so that you know exactly what to look out for when you're working on your own music. And uh, if you essentially follow these five steps and implement them into your own workflow, then I can essentially guarantee you a clear, rich sounding mockup. Um, orchestration is so important, but knowing what to do is as important as knowing what not to do. So definitely check that out. I think it'll be super valuable for you and uh, you can download it right away as my gift to you. So thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.